we're running a clinical trial of low dose rapamycin in long COVID, which I think people in the aging community would find interesting because so many people are also using rapamycin to promote longevity. The reason we're using rapamycin in a low dose, and we're talking about a really low dose. So our study starts with two milligrams once a week, our trial, and then finally moves into four milligrams once a week, but that's it. That's the, the highest dose that people are using. It's based on some of this literature by Joan Mannix group, which we found really interesting, which is in this case, this is one study by their team. What they did is they looked at the activity of two rapalogs. So analogs of rapamycin, not rapamycin exactly, but drugs with very similar characteristics. And they found a couple things to be true across studies where they were looking at these rapalogs. They found that after... I think it was in one case, just six weeks of Rapalog dosing, that there was an increase in interferon-induced antiviral gene expression in the group taking the Rapalogs, which is really huge because interferons are parts of the immune response that play a central role in keeping viruses in check. So if you want a herpes virus or a persistent virus to be in that state where it's more dormant or it's more latent, what you want is a strong interferon response to keep it down. And this team did find that these rapologs increase the expression of those interferons. If that's true, that would be huge for controlling persistent viral activity over time. Also, at the end of one of the trials of the rapologs, actually they did this in two cases, they gave patients the influenza vaccination. And then they measured the immune sort of response towards the vaccine. Like how robustly did people create antibodies after they were vaccinated? And the group taking the Rapalogs had a more robust response to influenza vaccination, suggesting again that taking the Rapalogs had enhanced or strengthened the way their immune system was going to create antibodies in response to either infections or something along the lines of what is needed for antibody responses. And in one study, of people on rapamycin, participants reported a lower rate of infection for up to a year after taking rapamycin, even though they had only taken rapamycin for a certain number of weeks. After that, even they had a lower rate of just respiratory infections, even UTI type infections over time. And in one of their studies, they actually found that there was improvement in T cell exhaustion in patients taking the rapalogs. And T cell exhaustion often occurs in the context of chronic viral infection, because if someone has viruses in them and those viruses are causing problems, the person's T cells keep kind of coming in to say, hey, this virus is not great. Hey, this isn't great. And the T cells, as they keep recognizing the virus, but probably don't succeed in clearing it, actually become exhausted. It's literally what it sounds like. They become tired as they keep trying to mitigate the effects of the chronic virus and they express markers that actually show that they are exhausted, that we can measure in a research setting to determine that T cells are exhausted, that people taking the Rapalogs in this one study showed less markers of T cell exhaustion after taking it. So overall, in our long COVID trial of low-dose rapamycin, we're, doing, we're measuring all these parameters. At the baseline, before people get rapamycin, we're measuring the interferon gene expression, we're measuring the T cell exhaustion, we're measuring all kinds of parameters of the immune response, plus doing targeted metrics of certain viral activity parameters so that we can actually see if there's a chance that rapamycin might be helping people better control viral activity. And if that's the case, then there's a chance that one of the reasons, and there could be many, but one of the reasons that rapamycin helps people with longevity is because viruses are involved in longevity driving uh, problems and rapamycin might be helping that to a certain extent.